Okay, I'm giving up. I'm going to refresh. Is this a good idea or not? I don't know. Reload. Come on. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be continuing the mtDNA series or the mitochondrial DNA series on family tree DNA. So this was the third part and I say it's probably going to be the last part of this little series. Um, the first part I talked about the matches section so you can I'll link it above I can't remember which way <laughs> I'll link it that's matches the second part I talked about mutations and today I'm just going to give you a little overview of pretty much you know the other little bits and pieces that I thought you might want to see if you haven't already please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell because it really helps out my channel when you do and also it will bring you good luck like it's actually known to bring you good luck so there's that you won't get bad luck if you don't subscribe but do you really want to take that risk let's get into the video so back on family tree dna and i'm going to scroll back down to mt dna so as i mentioned the first video i talked about matches second video i talked about mutations advanced matches is you can guess just something that's a little bit of a fancier look I'll click on it um yeah so if you want to I'm gonna be pointing at the screen like you can see it um, if you want to change any of these parameters look up specific things to look for particular kinds of matches anyway um what I thought I would talk about was ancestral origins because I think that is something that a lot of people get caught up on uh if it's ever gonna load here we go. All right, so the ancestral origins breaks down into three sections. It's your different kinds of matches. So as we've kind of talked about before, there's the HBR1. So I think I mentioned that the um, mitochondrial DNA is broken into three sections. That's the HBR1 region, the HBR2 region, and the coding regions. So some people have just taken one test or another. So these are my HBR1 matches. If I scroll down, these are HBR1 and HBR2. And then lastly, we have all three of them. So one, two, and the coding regions. This is because I've done the full sequence test. All right, but let's just go back up to the top and I'll explain what this is. Cause I think a lot of people get confused with this one. So what Ancestral Origins is telling you is the most distant known country of your matches. So everyone who's done their mtDNA test has traced as far up their female line as possible. Mother to mother to mother to mother to mother. Remember? And the furthest back that they've gotten, they've logged what country that person was in. So me, for example, my... How many greats? My... Great, great, great grandmother, I think, is as far as I've gotten on that line. And she was born in Ireland. So for me, um, I would have logged Ireland as the furthest back that I was aware of. This is what other people have logged. So Albania, for example, this first one. This is telling me that four, um, four of my matches have logged Albania as being their most distant known country so if they've gone mother to mother to mother to mother as far as they could go they landed on albania four of them country total is that 71 people um who've taken an mtDNA test have logged albania as their furthest back but four of those are matches to me does that make sense so 71 people have said my furthest back maternal ancestor is from Albania but four of those are from my haplogroup so they match with me okay so the percentage of the first one isn't there but the percentage let's look at the second one Algeria the percentage is not telling me that I'm 10.9 percent Algerian it's not an ethnicity estimate this isn't going to add up to 100 this is not telling me that I'm Algerian this is telling me that I have 18 matches whose most distant maternal ancestor is from Algeria. 
out of 165 people who've taken that test. So I match with 10.9% of these people. Hopefully that's making sense. <laughs> so it just tells me where other people who have the same haplogroup as me are in the world. This comment section, Ashkenazi and Sephardic here, the comments are added by um, Family Tree DNA staff. They're not added by anybody else. No users can do that. So these are little extras to kind of help you with this. So these break down the population. So they've put this here um, to say that out of these 18 people, um, some of them are from Ashkenazi or Sephardic population. So although they're from Algeria, they're telling me that they may be from a Jewish population within Algeria. So it's just that little bit of extra info. Me personally, I don't have any known Jewish ancestry. I'm pretty sure I don't have any, or if I do, it's very remote. <laughs> um, so this isn't telling me that I'm Jewish or that I'm Algerian. It's just telling me that I share um, a little, I share a maternal haplogroup with some of these people. So it means somewhere in the very, very, very far distant ancestry, um, we share a common ancestor. But that could be, you know, it could be recent or it could be an extremely long time ago. So as you can see, I can scroll through the different places and see where people have come from. So you can see there's a big spike from England, which doesn't surprise me. Um, though I still only match with 6.3%, so that's... Yeah. Um, Germany also, there's a big chunk, still only 6.5%, but I guess no population is going to be perfect, but England and Germany sure stand out as being, I have a lot more matches whose ancestry ends in those countries. I mean, as you can see in Germany, there's a lot of these sort of subpopulations as well. So... Yeah, perhaps my ancestry also goes there. I think what you're kind of looking for here is the bigger numbers around here. So I also have a fairly big number in Ireland, which doesn't surprise me because that's where my last known maternal ancestor um, lived. Decent chunk in Italy, which is surprising. Um, bit in Poland, Scotland. Yeah. US. And so the HVR1 is the most basic test. So I have the most matches there because I guess the most people took that test. Um, HVR1 and HVR2 is a little bit more refined. So it's going to be a more accurate and closer sort of thing. There's going to be less matches, as you can see. But once again, uh, England and Germany and Ireland are standing out. Um, so my maternal line probably goes back through those countries. That wouldn't be surprising. The full sequence test that I did, there's very few matches and <laughs> they're quite small. And that's probably because, as I discussed in the last video, I don't have any exact matches with that one. Um, so does that make sense? Just remember when you're looking at this, you're not, you're not looking at any kind of ethnicity estimate. These aren't all the countries that your ancestors are from. It's just countries where, um, people who share common ancestry with you have ended up. Okay. So let's go back and I'll show you the matches maps. Okay. So these, you can change these once again. So we've got HVR1, HVR2, and full sequence. I'll show you first full sequence. See the tiny amount of matches I'm getting there? So it's, it's put my, I actually don't have a marker on here. <laughs> Naughty. Um, Mary Dugan is my earliest known ancestor, born around 1805 in Ireland. Just going to get rid of that. Um, so here's some people who match me on the full sequence 
and they're in Ireland and there's also some in Canada. So these are literally all my matches who are showing up on here, which is very few. Um, as you can see, we've got you, like that's me. I would be a white pin if I was on here. Um, red would be an exact match, which I don't have any, unfortunately. Orange is one step. So these are the, the most closely related that I actually do have on here. So there's one here. I'm not going to click on it because it will give you um, their name and personal information. And I don't know if they want to share it. <laughs> and there's another one here. And then two step. That's someone just slightly more removed, still related to me, a little more removed. And we've got a couple here and down here. So interestingly, Ireland and Canada are where my matches are here. Um, if you want to <laughs> see, I, like I said, I've been naughty. I haven't added mine. Click update ancestors location. And it will only actually create one of these little push pin things if you've added in not just the country, but the city or the, the exact location. So it needs a location to put that little push pin thing in. So I mean, really, I should probably do that. Yeah, I'm, I don't think I'm going to do it now, though. I'll go back and do it. <laughs> um, all right. So that's my full sequence because not not uh, what am I saying? Because not much has shown up there. I can always go to the next couple. So HBR2. Whoa, there's a lot now. As you can see, there's two in Australia. Neither of them is me, obviously, because I would be, once again, a white pushpin. Why are they showing up as exact? Oh, they're showing up as exact because I'm not doing full sequence. This is just HBR2. Um, couple here couple down there but you can see that they're very strongly clustered around Europe and also the US um, I'd be willing to bet that all this big chunk in the US and Canada are people who eventually do trace back to Europe here um, Western Europe the reason that they're showing up in these other countries is because that's where their earliest known ancestor is they probably haven't managed to trace it back yet um, Okay, so if we then go back to HBR1, even more, even more crowded. <laughs> so you can see there, but once again, a huge block in Europe and that's where undoubtedly my maternal ancestry is going to land. Um, and yeah, a lot of people in the US have taken that test too. Okay, so you get the drift of that. Let's go back. And I'll just show you migrations maps are just showing the sort of path. So we're assuming that people came out of Africa here. Um, I know that these days there's a little debate on that one. I'm actually not sure. I have not looked very deep into that. So let's just assume people came from Kenya. And then you can see that they've moved up and up sort of north, north, north. And around here moving from Turkey across into like Greece this is where these haplogroups have originated so I am a H I'm H56C so the H here and the H here so it means that my ancestry my um, mitochondrial ancestry has cropped up somewhere along these lines either heading west across towards Portugal or north up towards Scandinavia. Um, yeah, so that's just a little bit of interest. It's just a little bit interesting to look at. Um, if you click on all migrations map, you can see that there's all sorts of um, paths all over the place. So if you came from one of these haplogroups, you'd be able to see that a path heading in a different direction. So that's what you would get if you do your mtDNA test with family tree DNA. Um, I highly recommend it if you're a geek like me and just wants to learn everything about their ancestry. <laughs> um, but it can also be helpful if you are sort of stuck on your maternal line as I am and you know I'm gonna have to contact some of these matches and see what happens. 
If you have any questions or comments, please put them below in the comment section. I'd be happy to do my best to answer them. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye guys.